Um, okay, so welcome again to the DARE workshop. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce um, Janne Kohonen, who is a postdoc in uh, IST Austria, who's been working in, in Finland, in Iceland, and uh, both in centralized and, uh, and distributed algorithms. And uh, and on distributed algorithm, he has like a, a focus on uh, on the topic of congestion, on congest and uh, congested click model, and uh, what well, he does interesting work in uh, in this area, and so. That's it. So, Yanni, the, the stage is yours. Uh, thank you. So, this talk is um, about parameterized complexity and how I think it relates to distributed computing and then how all this relates to uh, like sparsity and structuring graphs. Um, so, as a disclaimer, when I pitched this talk to Lauren, uh, I, I didn't, the title of the workshop was not yet decided and there's this word realistic in the title somewhere and uh, I can guarantee that this doesn't contain any realistic networks. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, so let's get started. So, so like I said, we're talking about sparsity and structure in distributed message passing. Uh, and I'm just going to skip over the traditional definitions of local congest and the congested click. Uh, I hope you listened to the previous talk and like heard the definitions. But just as a recap, remember that local is the one with unlimited bandwidth and congest is the one with the lock n bandwidth. And I'm focusing more on congest in this talk, but I'll mention some things about local. Okay, so, so when we talk about structured graphs and sparse graphs, there are sort of two different perspectives one can take. Uh, one is this that you look at structured uh, classes, like trees or grids, uh, something where you basically have like a graph property uh, that, or like you're thinking about a class of graphs, like it's sort of a binary thing, like either you have uh, graph with this structure or you don't have. And the second perspective is something um, I will call parameterized classes, like bounded degree uh, graphs. Uh, and here the idea is that you have some kind of parameter of the uh, graph structure and you kind of care about how, how this parameter affects your running times. So for instance, if you look at something like bounded degree graphs, you usually care about uh, the running time, uh, both as a parameter of the maximum degree and as as function of the size of the input graph. So something like what I'm showing here on the slide. Um, and more generally, you can you can think about this in context of any graph parameter. So graph parameter is just a mapping from graphs uh, to integers, or more generally, you can consider reals or whatever, but here we just focus on integers and it can be any function as long as it's invariant under isomorphisms uh, because, you know, we, we don't want that kind of nonsense where it depends on the labels or uh, input IDs or whatever. And when you have some graph parameter, you can ask this question on how fast can we solve uh, like your favorite problem as a function of the parameter and the size of the instance? Uh, and usually what you see is something like a function of the parameter plus something that depends on n or function of the parameter times something that depends on the n. So this is kind of the space we are working on, but we'll make this slightly more concrete uh, in a moment. Uh, but first, I'll make one digression to the fixed parameter tractability. So what is fixed parameter tractability? Um, so this is a concept from centralized algorithms. And basically what we are looking at is uh, parameterized languages. So we have some set of strings. And uh, in addition to the string, we have an integer that we call the parameter. Uh, so this is just a language augmented with an integer. Uh, 
And the idea is that we say that parameterized language is fixed parameter tractable, uh, FPT. If there is an algorithm with a running time such that you can have arbitrary dependence on the parameter, but your dependence on the size of the input uh, is polynomial. So the idea is that like we're looking at something like NP hard problems and we want to somehow isolate the hardness of the problem into this parameter. So like the non-polynomial part only depends on this parameter. And these are called fixed parameter tractable problems. And I'll mention that W1 hardness is the notion or like the hardness notion of not being in FPT, uh, which is like roughly analog of NP. Right. Um, uh, so just to make this more concrete, here are a couple of examples. For instance, uh, path detection, like detecting a path of length K uh, or a cycle of length K is fixed parameter tractable. Like for instance, the classic color coding algorithm of Alon. Uh, uh, on the other hand, if you look at click detection in centralized setting again, uh, like is there a click of size k? Uh, this is w1 hard. So basically, the you can do algorithms that have running time that's something like n to the k, but you cannot get these fixed parameter type algorithms. And if you look at both of these problems, uh, you'll notice that like if you don't consider the parameterized version, but rather this parameter k is part of the input, these are classical NP hard problems. Like path cycle detection is Hamiltonian path or cycle, and click detection is well, click detection. Um, but one thing you can do in fixed parameter setting is that you can change what this parameter uh, denotes. Uh, so basically, you can, for instance, look at click detection parameterized by the maximum degree of the graph. Uh, so, uh, so basically, your instance is the standard click instance, a graph and an integer. And then your parameter is delta, which is the maximum degree of the graph. Uh, and for technical reasons, how the way you define this is like your instance is a yes instance if this parameter is uh, like actually the maximum degree of the graph and then you have k click in this graph and this is fixed parameter tractable because like if you have bounded max degree you can just look at each node and do click detection in its neighborhood and this neighborhood is fairly small right uh, so this is the idea of fixed parameter tractability uh, so the question is how do we define uh, fixed parameter track or like can we define fixed parameter tractability in the distributed setting? So this has been studied uh, a bit. Um, there are these couple of papers that explicit, sort of explicitly or implicitly define fixed parameter tractability in distributed models so that uh, we say that graph problem P with parameter K is distributed FPT in your favorite distributed computing model if it can be solved in uh, running time that only depends on the parameter. Right. So somehow the idea is that the complexity only depends on the parameter. Uh, now, since I like to get invited to uh, workshops to give talks, I will criticize this definition by the workshop organizers and say that I don't think this is quite the right way to think about fixed parameter tractability in distributed setting, or at least it's not the whole story. So basically, if you look at things that are sort of fixed parameter tractable in distributed setting, um, you can look at K path detection, which is sort of clearly fixed parameter tractable according to the definition that we saw earlier. So you can detect parts of length k in time uh, k to the k in conscious model. Um, but on the other hand, if you look at cycle detection, more specifically odd cycle detection, because it behaves more nicely, um, 
you have you can adapt this previous algorithm like the spot detection algorithm to get running time k to the uh, k 2 to the k uh, n and you can also show that you have lower bound that is linear in n uh, and somehow i want to argue that both of these should have some kind like this should be both instances of uh, fixed parameter tractability in the distributed setting uh, so k part detection is somehow like constant time fpt or fully fpt and the cycle detection is something like linear time fpt but uh, like so i i'm not sure how to actually sort of formalize this situation but my point is here that uh, like fixed parameter tractability phenomena happen in distributed computing even outside of like this fully FPD regime where you only have dependence on the uh, on the parameter. Uh, so overall I kind of like to think about this in terms of like having dependence on the dependence on the parameter and dependence on the instance size and then you can ask like what are these two dependencies and do you have trade-offs be trade between these dependencies, right? So, for instance, in local, if we look at uh, maximum degree, uh, then you kind of have these uh, trade-offs, like you can make the uh, end dependence really small, but then you have to pay more in terms of the max delta dependence, or then you can sort of make the uh, <clears throat> make the end dependence slightly larger, like logarithmic, but then you don't really have to pay this, this horrible dependence in delta, right? Okay, but that's like the sort of uh, way I like to think about these type of algorithms. Um, but okay, so let's look at uh, graph parameters in distributed computing. So Somehow the basic idea here would be that uh, instead of looking at some like at something like creeks or trees, you actually take some graph parameter, uh, what, whatever you prefer, and then you study complexity of um, some problem or multiple problems with regards to this parameter you have picked, and then you maybe get some results. And and I guess the key question here is: Is this a good way to think about things? So there are a couple of sort of variants. Uh, first is like you can define all sorts of uh, all sorts of uh, parameters. You have lots of choice, if, especially if you look at what's been done in the fixed parameter tractability commu community. And the second question is: uh, Are these parameters actually interesting uh, from the perspective of distributed computing? Like you kind of would like to have some parameter that explains something or models something that we have in the real world. So one, so basically one one sort of motivation why people are looking at the structural parameters in fixed parameter tractability is because often like real world instances of hard problems have some like they have fairly small parameters for some suitably chosen parameter and if you can solve things fast in terms of that parameter then that's really nice in practice uh, so for us the question is uh, do real networks actually have small parameters or for instance if we are designing networks can we make sure that these parameters are small <clears throat> okay but Let's forget all that and just look at some parameters that have been studied just to get like some kind of idea what you can do with this, this framework or this way of thinking. So here's basically a hazard diagram of some, uh, some possible graph parameters that have been studied in distributed computing. This doesn't cover everything, but there are lots of things out there. So basically the way you read this chart is that if you have uh, some parameter and some other parameter above it in this diagram, then you basically have a linear upper bound for this lower 
parameter by this upper parameter. There might be some constant factors, but they're usually nice. Uh, okay, in terms of like when we want to translate results from one parameter to, to another. So the way you can think about this is that the ones that are up on this chart, they usually permit faster algorithms in terms of dependence on the parameter or even the size of uh, instance. But uh, the ones that are lower on, the, on this chart, they are usually like if you pick some fixed network and look at these different parameters, the ones that are like down on this chart, they have smaller parameters or the parameter values are smaller. Uh, and just to highlight something that that's in, on this chart. So in green, you have maximum degree and diameter, which are very common parameters in distributed computing. And then you have some other stuff highlighted like degeneracy and tree width about which we already heard in the previous talk, which are sort of very classical parameters to study. Uh, right, any questions at this point? I guess not. So just to give you some kind of flavor of what can be done using structural parameters in distributed computing, I'm just giving you a couple of examples of the of the parameters I highlighted on the previous slide. So first we we should look at degeneracy, which well, I guess this part is somewhat redundant because we heard most of this in the previous talk already. So just to recap. Uh, so degeneracy uh, is basically equivalent with or or the same thing as k core number with coloring number and it's basically equivalent to arboricity. So um, it has lots of names. Um, and there are lots of ways to define this. Uh, like the simplest one to state is that graph is de degenerate if every subgraph has a vertex of degree at most d. Or alternatively and most usefully for algorithms, uh, graph is d degenerate if and only if it has an acyclic orientation without degree d. And this is just the things that were basically in the previous talk. So you can complete compute this uh, bounded out degree orientations or equivalent the forest decompositions in lock and rounds. And then you can use this to like uh, solve coloring in, in the local model or solve various subgraph detection problems in the congest model uh, in a way that where you have very nice dependence on N and very nice dependence on D. But I, I'll just add that what actually happens is that while uh, clicks, four cycles and five cycles are fairly nice in this setting, uh, for six cycles, you will actually require uh, like square root N rounds, even with degenerate two. And if you want to go beyond this, uh, like, we have this, I'm working on this with an intern and we have some results that say like induced K parts can be solved in like fixed parameter time when parameterized by uh, the length of the part and the degeneracy of the graph. Uh, and by contrast, like uh, induced part detection without degeneracy bounds is at least conditionally hard. So this is like an example that's maybe more about, uh, like that has more fixed parameter flavor because the function I'm hiding there is pretty horrible. Well, it's exponential, slightly more than exponential. Uh, so another classic parameter is three width. Uh, so three width is kind of an, irritating parameter to define because it's somewhat complicated, but basically you can kind of like a simple definition that's not necessarily even um, very intuitive is you can construct these graphs called K trees by starting from a K plus one click. And then at each step, taking some K click 
and then adding one ver new vertex to this k click to make a k plus one click. And if you continue this process, you will get k trees. And trees of um, like cross of three with k are subgraphs of k trees by definition. Uh, and there are other definitions like by three decompositions and well, most importantly by three decompositions. And these are very nice in the centralized fixed parameter tractability theory, because many classical NP hard problems are fixed parameter tractable parameterized by three width. And this is like the classical dynamic programming over three decomposition that you may have seen. It's fairly, fairly elegant algorithmic technique. Uh, but I, I won't go into this in detail. But I'll mention that there is this one work that studies three with in distributed setting, which basically says that you can compute uh, like constant factor approximation of three with in this time that's super exponential in three with, and also depends on the diameter uh, in congest model. And then you can use this to basically emulate these centralized uh, uh, dynamic programming algorithms over over 3d compositions to get like like so sort of fixed parameter algorithms for lots of hard np hard problems in the conscious model so i should mention that this paper has not to my knowledge been published anywhere even though it's been on an archive for a few years so maybe check it before you use it um and I'll just quickly mention how much time do I have? Okay. Uh, vertex cover number, which is pretty high on this chart. So this is like a parameter that's very easy to use for algorithms, but usually for practical instances, uh, this is very high. Uh, so vertex cover number is just the size of the minimum vertex uh, cover. And it, what it means in practice is you have this graph where you have very dense core or like possibly dense core and all the other vertices are just connected to this core uh, and this is like something like this core periphery networks you see in network science occasionally but like the limitation here is that um, your core has to be very small because the size of the core is the parameter, so it's very small core. Um, and there's not really much stuff done on the vertex cover number uh, in distributed setting, though it's been widely studied in centralized setting. But if you take this and do some silly things, you can, for instance, show that induced subgraph detection tasks can be solved in time parameterized by vertex cover. Uh, it's actually the the algorithm is slightly banal because you just you can basically try all possibilities on the vertex cover and then rest the rest of the stuff is easy because uh, i guess the key point to notice is that vertex cover is also gives you an upper bound for diameter so if you have small vertex cover size then you have small diameter and everything gets fairly easy right um so I'm actually running out of time. So I'll just mention quickly this idea of kernelization that I also wanted to talk about. So this is another thing from uh, uh, parameterized complexity. So the basic idea of kernelization is that you have a parameterized instance and a kernelization algorithm is something that maps this instance into a smaller instance of the same problem so that the size of the um, size of the smaller instance only depends on this parameter. Uh, and basically the reason why this would be interesting for distributed computing community is that if you have uh, fast distributed kernelization algorithms, so the idea would be that you can take your input graph and then somehow compress it in a distributed matter, a manner into a small size that depends only on this k, parameter k, uh, then you can just gather this small uh, 
small remaining instant or single node and brute force the solution locally. And there is like one example of things, uh, one example where this actually works in the distributed setting is uh, with computing a minimum vertex cover, where you have these very efficient algorithms, both in congest and congested click models. Uh, okay, I'll skip those. So, so the takeaway messages here is our uh, first, uh, like, like this whole parameterized complexity perspective. So you can look at structural parameters of the graphs. But the question is, like the meta question is like, are these parameters actually re relevant for distributed computing? Like for instance, if you look at real networks, and you compute the tree width of, a, of like all real networks you have, like is this small, is this large, is the degeneracy large, or, or like are all of these parameters completely useless from perspective of uh, actual networks? And this is like, like one question I would like to see answered. So if someone is doing stuff like this, please, please compute the tree width of all your real world networks. And the second question is, is more generally connecting uh, techniques and results from parameterized complexity to distributed computing. And I think there is still quite a lot of room to explore these connections. Uh, like on top of things that have been done already. So I'll basically just stop here and leave you with these questions that I came up in, like when thinking about these questions for five minutes. Um, that's yeah. it. Thank you. Questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so are there questions? With a few minutes for questions. Okay. If, yeah, someone? Is there something in the chat? Um, look about, oh, sorry. I just want to talk about this uh, your disagreement for the parameterized comp uh, uh, definition of. Hmm parameterized algorithm in the distributed setting, like uh, what you expect, for example, like n to the k to be uh, xp, like uh, you want to have something uh, equivalent to S xp, right? Uh, uh, like n to the right. k, like that? Yeah. yeah, I guess the complication here is like, like in the centralized setting, you don't really have to care about what this polynomial thing is, as long as it doesn't depend on the on the parameter. But in the distributed setting, you kind of really have to care about this polynomial part because it it can be really bad. But if you look at, for instance, at congested clique, what you have is like uh, the best algorithm for something like path or cycle detection, it has this like FPT structure. Like for cycles, you have this two to the K and then you have the matrix multiplication time. But if you look at something like dominating set, uh, like K dominating set, the running time is something like N to the one minus one over K or something like this. So you kind of, in, in congested click, at least, you kind of see these like, like XP type algorithms and FPT type algorithms as sort of different types of algorithms. But that, I, I mean, this would be really interesting to see this formalized in some sense in distributed thing. Um, maybe so one more question? Petro's question. Yeah, I, I have a question. So, yeah. I, thank, you, thank you very much for your for your presentation. Then I wanted to to know more more about the the result that you you uh, 
wanted to present about the the click model that you skipped like uh, very very fast and I, I missed it. So maybe you can uh, tell tell us more about that. Uh, so do you mean the uh, yeah. minimum vertex cover? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so very briefly, the basically the question is like how fast can you solve, like find a vertex cover of size K in the congested click or congest. Um, uh, and basically you can do this in K rounds if you're given the parameter K as input. And what you do is you use this classical like push canalization named after some boss, uh, where you basically can do this trick that like, if you look at vertices of high degree, they basically have to be in the vertex cover because otherwise you can't cover the edges incident to them. So you just say that all these will go to the vertex cover. And then you look at what remains in the graph. And basically it's a fairly easy lemma to show that either the number of edges you have left is very small, or then you know that you don't have vertex cover of size k. And then what you can do is that you can just gather these remaining edges into a single node, and then you, you just brute force the remaining solution. And, and this is kind of the idea, what, or the thing why I'm saying that kernelization is interesting in distributed setting, because you kind of have this, it's kind of a way to compress your instances. And if you can compress things in distributed setting, then you can maybe learn them efficiently in a single node and then just cheat using local computation. That's, that's uh, interesting. Uh, I, uh, I have a, a, a result about the leak model when mm -hmm. we uh, show that uh, any graph class, uh, every for every uh, graph class or, or set of graphs that is uh, small, I mean small, but by small I mean like less than two to the k log n or n log n, uh, sorry, order two to the n log n different graphs, then you can reconstruct and you can like communicate all the edges to every vertex uh, in in log n uh, in, in one in a, in, in a constant round, in two rounds or, or, or so. So I, I wonder how this uh, this result is can be related related to, to this because in many cases when you have a bounded parameter uh, you are in a class of graphs or in a family of graphs that is that is right, I think I've seen the paper actually at some point. So, um, so actually, yeah, I, I hadn't think, thought about that connection, but there might be something there at least to some mm -hmm. degree. Like, like if I remember it correctly, it was more like you only need sort of the size of the graph class. So I'm thinking like one possible question is like, is that optimal way to do it? Or like, are there some parameters? Like if you look at bounded parameter uh, class for some parameter, you can actually get below this like sort of information theoretic bound. Yeah, I, I think that our, our, our algorithm was, was uh, tight, but the drawback is that the, the complexity or the local time complexity is locally, not locally polynomial. So maybe in this case you can do uh, Well, so I guess I guess we'll take the, the rest of the discussion uh, yeah. after the next talk. Okay, so there, there is a, a break just after. So, so let's say that uh, we go to the next speaker and uh, thank you again, Yanne, for this uh, thank you. very interesting talk.